Welcome back to A20, special relativity. So we're going to continue the discussion and make the case against ether by discussing stellar aberration. So the problem we have in mind here is the ones where we use a telescope to look at a distant star. When we do this, the effect of ether might change the way we have to orient our telescopes. Let's have a look at this. So we are in a situation that our hypothesis is that the ether exists, it carries as a medium in which light travels, but it's dragged with Earth. In that situation, so this is our case number one. In that situation, uh, the telescope looks at the star, the, the, the light of the, of the star enters our telescope at the top and then tries to go to the bottom. Because the medium in which the light travels and the telescope move with the same velocity, remember the ether is dragged with the Earth, the, uh, light appears to go straight down in the telescope. Without, and that's our case too, without the either being tracked or even exist, uh, we actually do have to um, slightly tilt our telescope. Why? Because when the, uh, after the light hits the top of our telescope, the telescope keeps moving because it's in a different reference frame. And therefore we have to have this slight tilting angle. The, the value of the tilt is equal to the velocity of the Earth over C. This is a well-known effect in astrophysics. Um, and by the way, it was already studied uh, way earlier by James Bradley in the 1720s. Um, he actually developed the uh, not really supported theory of light where he was talking about the particle nature of, of light. Um, so his idea was that, you know, very similar to case two, that, you know, Earth is moving in a different reference frame with respect to the star and the sun, moving around the sun. Um, and therefore the tilting angle needs to be, um, tangent of the tilting angle needs to be equal to the distance of Earth to the sun and the distance to the star. This angle is very, very small because the nearest star you are able to observe is about four light years away. So with this now we can, Again, do our ether versus particle nature um, model comparison. So in our first discussion, we concluded clearly, clearly that the weight in ether um, hypothesis dominates or wins. But now we have studied at least two uh, further experiments. So again, I invite you to stop here and think about how stellar aberration and Michelson Morley would be answers with a particle model or wave model kind of explanation. There's a third experiment, the Prezo re experiment, but we haven't, I did not discuss this one. All right. So for stellar aberration, the particle model actually seems to work as it was proposed by Bradley uh, to solve this very problem. Uh, and the Michael Morley, Morley experiment also is consistent with the particle model. So now we are in this dilemma that there are some experiments or experimental evidence for particle ether nature and some for a particle nature of the flight. So the question now is how do we get out of this dilemma? And we'll discuss this in one of the next lectures. 